Hi. Have you ever wondered how many people might inhabit the U.S. in 20 years? For example, if the U.S. population grows by 1.5% each year, how many people will there be in 20 years? In today's lesson, you will learn how to create and graph exponential relationships by using exponential functions. Before we can do that, let's go ahead and review a few things. I want to show you an example of exponential growth, where we're starting with 25 dots, and the number of dots increase by 40% in every step. We'll start with this initial group of 25 dots, and I want to grow this group by 40%. So I'm going to take 40% of that group and add it to the current group, and then you can see the number of dots we have there. So we've added 10, we should be at 35 dots. Now I want to have this population grow by 40% one more time. So I need to take 40% or two-fifths of this group and add it on. You'll notice now that I'm adding a different, larger amount to the population, but the percentage of growth remains the same. So what that means is in exponential growth, the amount by which the population grows increases, but the ratio of growth remains constant. Let's go ahead and review one more thing here. With this example, we've grown from a population of 25 to a population of 35. Then we added 40% more to make our final group of dots. We could apply an equation to that. The formula we're going to use is y equals a times 1 plus r to the x. The a represents the starting population, in this case 25, and the r represents the rate of growth, in this case 40% or 0.4 as a decimal. Let's go ahead and simplify, and we're going to find our equation y equals 25 times 1.4 to the x. One more thing to review, and that is graphs. When we graph exponential functions, we're going to see two different types of exponentials, those which are exponential growth, and you'll see that here. It starts out adding slowly, and as the time, con excuse me, as the inputs continue to get larger and larger, the amount by which the output grows increases, so this curve gets steeper and steeper and steeper. Exponential decay is the other type of exponential we might see. As you might imagine, in exponential decay, the population, or excuse me, the output values decrease, but in this case by a decreasing amount. The amount by which they decrease gets smaller and smaller as the inputs increase. Before we get started, I want to make sure that I'm extra clear about a common mistake that you might make. So if you see values growing, then the growth factor has to be greater than 1. But if you have a population or a bank account whose value is decaying, getting smaller, then the decay factor is less than 1, but more than 0. So an example of the first might be the growth factor of 1.4 is greater than 1. That means this population is growing in size. But if we have a decay factor of 0.4, that means this population here would be shrinking or decaying. Let's go ahead and investigate the following problem here today. The population of the United States has grown by approximately 1.5% each year for the past 100 years. If the population of the U.S. was 92.2 million 100 years ago, create and graph the function relating time and the population of the U.S. I want to go ahead and highlight the important information here. I know that it's growing by 1.5% each year, and that the population 100 years ago was 92.2 million. This problem is asking me to do two things, to create and then graph the function relating time and population. Let's go ahead and translate that into our equation. First thing we want to do is start with our formula here. I've replaced y and x with p and t. p is the population and t is time. We know our starting population was 92.2 million. I'm going to plug that in for a. I also know that the growth rate is 1.5% each year. So our r there is going to be 0 0.015, which is the 
decimal equivalent of 1.5 percent. Let's go ahead and simplify and we come up with our formula which tells us the population equals 92.2 million times 1.015 to the t. The second thing we want to do is make a graph of this. So to do that, I need to make my axes. I want to label my input time in years, and my, pop, my y axis, my output, is population in millions. I need to go ahead and plug in some various inputs by using my calculator and find out what is the output population. And then what I can do is take each one of those and plot them onto my graph. As I do this, you'll notice that at first it doesn't seem like our population may be growing by an increasing rate. But as we continue to progress in time, you can see this curve forming, which represents our exponential growth. In today's lesson, you have learned how to create and graph exponential relationships by using exponential functions.